Okay, we're going to talk about higher order derivatives next. Higher order derivatives means that you're taking derivative multiple times. So supposing that our f of x is your original function, we have some different derivatives here. Of course, f prime of x, we've already been talking about this uh, section already. That's the first derivative of f is what it's called. But then you have higher derivatives. So this is the second derivative. So if it says find the second derivative, what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of f prime. And then we have the third derivative it could ask you for as well. This is going to be the derivative of the second one. So the third derivative of f is the derivative of the this one here. And so on. You can keep on doing that, taking derivatives, derivative of derivative of derivative, keep on doing that all the way down. This right here is the nth. That means that maybe they might want you to find the fifth derivative or the tenth derivative, something like that. Now, now, of course, for some of these functions, these may not even exist. You may keep, in, keep taking the derivative and you'll get to the point where the derivative is going to be zero forever at that point. That's very possible, but you could have higher power derivatives they could ask for. It's the nth derivative. That means it's the derivative of the one right before it. So if they want the eighth derivative, that means you're taking the derivative of the seventh one that's there. That's what this notation here means. So now we've taken a look at this. Let's look at a couple examples. Okay, for the example, it says find all der the derivatives of all orders. This right here means that you're going to keep taking the derivative until you reach zero. Once you reach zero, then it, we can say that we've done the derivatives of all the orders that matter until you take it down to zero and we'll stop there. So we have f of x. Let's do the first derivative. We're going to use the power rule for this one. So 3 comes down, we get 12. So one way to do this is you can just take the power up here and you can multiply it by that one, then subtract this uh, by 1. So we're going to do multiply these, that's 12x squared. These will multiply, that's 10x to the first power. There's a constant there, you'll get 3 and then derivative 1 is going to be 0. That's the first derivative, we've done that already a lot in this section. Let's now find the second derivative. The second derivative would be the derivative of this one. So we're just going to take the derivative of our answer. 2 comes down, multiplies by 12, 24x to the first power. This is 10 times x, you're just left with the constant when you take the derivative, you get 10. That's going to be it. Derivative of 3 is going to be 0. Next, we're going to find the third derivative. We're taking the derivative of this one. Derivative of the constant. You did constant times x. You just get the constant. You're going to get 24. Derivative of 10 is 0. And then finally, we get down here, and you would write it this way. Usually after 3, three primes, you just start writing the number down there. So we have the fourth derivative and then that's going to be zero. Once you get to zero, that means that all other derivatives past that will be zero. So that means you found the derivative of all orders, you've taken it all the way down until you get to zero. For the next one, we want to find just the third derivative specifically is what they're asking for. So here's our function that we're working with. We did an example similar to this one before, and I mentioned that anytime you've got a bunch of things on top and you have one term on the bottom, it's better to break it all up. Yes, we could do this problem using the quotient rule since we've already talked about that already, but it's going to be easier just to divide everything by x and then apply the power rule. So if you can, you can do that, if you can eliminate the possibility of using quotient, that's going to be better, less chances to make a mistake and the problem will be easier that way. So first, we're not doing any derivatives yet, we're just dividing everything on top by x. So I'm going to divide each of these separately, so x cubed over x plus 2x squared over x minus 1 over x. Then I'm going to simplify this one. Okay, so the x I can cancel out there and I get x squared. For this one I can write that as 2x and then this one I'm going to write as x to negative 1 power so that way I can get make it ready to use the power rule. Now, we're ready to do the derivative by applying the power rule. We're going to apply the derivative to, uh, to this, so we're going to use power rule 2 comes down, x to the first power. This one you're just going to be left with 2. This one negative multiplies by that negative, you're going to get a plus 1x. 
subtract 1 from that and you get negative 2. Now you don't want to change it back into a fraction, you want to keep it in this format because we've got to find the derivative two more times. We've got to find the third derivative. So now we're going to do the second derivative, which means that's the derivative of this one here. So we get derivative of 2x is 2, derivative of 2 is 0, and then when we do this one, the negative 2 is going to come down, subtract 1 from that power, and you're going to get negative 3. We're going to do one more derivative. Again, you want to find the third derivative. So now we're going to do the third one. Derivative of 2 is 0. Negative 3 comes down and multiplies by negative 2. You'll get a positive 6. Subtract 1 from that power, and you get negative 4. So the final answer, third derivative, is going to be, we can write it as 6 over x to the fourth. Since we're writing our answer now, it's OK to take it out of that negative exponent form, and we'll write it as this. So the answer is 6 over x to the fourth.